Hello and welcome back to another Torch Review. I've got a brand new model in today. It's the M2R Warrior from Olight. Just come out, so I've been testing this, and this sample was sent in via Olight for an independent review. Just looking over the front of the box, you'll see some of the specs on this, up to 1500 lumens, just over 200 meters range. And on the back of the box, it also lists out some of the features. Got some interesting ones with this model, including a uh, double switch on the uh, tail, base cap and we also have a higher output than other uh, recent torches we've seen from Olight as well as the ability to charge different batteries, normal batteries with the magnetic charger. Just on the front of the box it tells you the information about switching the modes, we'll have a look at that later on. We'll take it out of the box, nice presentation, premium torch, you'd expect these sort of things. And looking at the body, first thing you notice is it's quite a small torch, uh, definitely smaller than a lot of the 18650s that I've looked at put the specs on screen for you. It's also got very nice knurling on it, quite thick, uh, decent grip and extends quite a long way up the body. Notice that double clip that we have. This is the tail switch. This is a two position switch. So you can push it halfway or fully and it's completely uh, almost silent as well as magnetic. Taking a look at the side switch, you can see there's a raised bump at the top. This also houses the LED for the low battery warning. There's some pretty thick grooves on this to uh, help dissipate the heat as it's a higher output torch. We've got a crenulated bezel at the top with the signature Olight blue color. Now looking at the LED on this one, we have um, noticed that we do have a textured reflector and it's quite thick as well. The texturing is quite cool, so we're expecting something which is going to have a bit more flood than throw. And you see the markings on the base cap there. The double um, clip is there, quite a nice feature. You can also remove it and put it at the bottom section if you want, but as you can use it either way, I personally just leave it as it is out of the box at the top point, but you have a choice on that, or of course you can just completely remove it if you want to. That's the attachment hole for the lanyard. We'll just unscrew this. Comes with a pretty high capacity battery, which we'll be doing a test on very shortly. This is the 3,500 milliamp hour cell. Um, this is about as big as you get for a lithium ion cell. And looking at the base cap, you'll see the markings. The positive terminal face is that. It's not possible to get in there and take the magnet out. You can also see a spring at the top as well, as well as an inner tubing that has the marking for the uh, positive terminal. This is the magnetic charging cable, same as the other ones that I've looked at on Olight, and it just snaps firmly into place on the base cap. The reason I have that inner tube is because you have that switch with the two positions on the base cap. This is the supplied hand strap, very similar to the other ones that I've looked at from Olight, and the holster is quite nice. This is very different to other holsters I've looked at. The material initially seems thinner, but you do have a popper on the back. There's also a belt loop under that. I like the fact that they've gone for something a bit different on this, and to open this one up you need to push it down. You can see it's covered by the fabric there, and open it up. Now I initially didn't think there was any padding on this, but there is a felt lining and there's some light padding um, on the sides and the front. So there is actually a decent little holster, it's just a bit lower profile, and I think they've done a good job on the design. You do have a hole at the bottom to let moisture out of water. And it's pretty secure thanks to the clip design too. Excellent fit as you'd expect for the torch custom made. Definitely one of the nicer holsters I've looked at and well done to Olight for trying something a bit different. Now because we've got dual springs we can also use um, unprotected cells. This is the LG cell that I've done a review on. This is a high drain cell, you can use it for vaping and other activities. With cells like this, you'll be able to hit the top power level of 1500 lumens. Now if you use the lower capacity ones, the 2600 or lower, you'll trip the protection, so you'll be able to go up to about 1000 on that. I'll explain that a bit later on. So once the ch this is charging the LG cell now in the torch, so no custom batteries with this. You can use any battery that you want, flat top or button top to charge. And then when that's finished, it turns to green. Testing the termination voltage, pretty much spot on, 4.2, 4.19. And the user manual just goes over the specs again. You notice you've got two different turbo modes. That's for the two different modes that you can go into. We've also got quite a lot of power levels on this. We have a total of six. 
and the user manual just goes over the basic operation, which is very straightforward. I honestly didn't even have to really look at the manual for very long to get the grasp on that. This section again, just on the operation, you do have a lockout, you have mode memory, direct access to the turbo mode too. You can also go directly into the strobe. The UI is very similar to previous Olight torches that I've looked at. Single press for on and off. And then you can push and hold, cycle through the power levels, or you can just to quickly release after you've held it for a short period of time. So pretty much the same as the other Olights, and they get along pretty well with that. If you push and hold, you go into the moonlight. If you hold it in for a longer period of time, you go into the lockout mode. And you'll see the red LED come up on the side switch if you try and turn it on in lockout. Just push and hold again to get out of that. Triple press takes you into the strobe mode. Now onto the base switch, which is a dual action on this. So you push halfway, you can feel it. It's quiet. You can't really feel it, hear a click or tool or anything out of it like that. And then you fully press in to engage whatever mode that you're into. This is in the enhanced mode at the minute. Now to switch the mode, it's very simple on this. Just push in the tail cap switch and the side switch and you have switched over. So out of the box, it comes in the standard mode, which gives you the turbo and the momentary on. But if you switch over to the other mode, that gives you a higher output turbo. And you can also have instant access to the strobe on the tower switch, which is a nice feature. So bear that in mind that the turbo output will vary depending on which mode that you are in. Don't really see that as a problem myself. The only thing to watch is if you're using a lower capacity battery. You might want to switch it over to the mode which won't trip, i.e. around about the 1000 lumens. And because the crenulated bezel, you'll be able to see if you've left it on. Also pretty solid tail standing too. Comparing it to the Claris XT12S, I'll be doing a review on this shortly. It's just come in. That's a traditional tactical torch. The Olight is more of a modern tactical, if you want to use that word. It's their own take on it. They've both got magnetic charging but different reflectors. The Olight has a textured, and on the Claris you have a very deep, smooth reflector. Now the magnetic base is pretty good, but I think it could do with a little bit more uh, grip, just to, particularly on surfaces, because that stainless steel switch. So it works okay, but maybe an area for improvement on that it tends to slide down. Battery came at 3,536, which is about what you'd expect for a cell of this type. And the low battery indicator comes on at 10% glows red. Wouldn't have minded an extra power level indicator for a mid-level, but that's maybe something for future models. Water resistance test was fine. Charging speeds are a bit slower than a micro USB connection, but um, there are some advantages to the magnetic charging too. I'll do some beam shots now and we'll come back with a conclusion.
should be able to see from the beam patterns that I've done on the videos that this is more of an EDC type beam spread rather than a really hot spot in the middle tactical type pattern. That's not really something which would bother me, but it is something to consider. But I like I've done a nice job on this. They've done an interesting design. It works very well, very good user interface, very consistent. I also like the holster gone for a different design, something unusual, and it works very well. There are a couple of small points to note. The base magnet could be a bit stronger. Magnetic charging speeds are going to be a bit slower than a direct connection and possibly a spare o-ring and a mid-level battery indicator but there's some good stuff here too the dual action on the tail switch is very nice works very well also was quite keen on the fact that you could charge normal cells in this as well so the custom cells are gone so any cell that you put into this you can charge which is good news particularly for those of us that have multiple batteries lying around so let me know what you think on this torch would this be something that you'd be interested in or would you change any areas of the design so thank Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I'll be doing some more torch reviews and I'll catch up with you in my next video review shortly.